When you see the joy of these indigenous Paias Christians from the Nassau tribe in southern Colombia, it's hard to imagine all they've had to endure because of their faith in Jesus Christ. We have been persecuted simply because we are evangelical Christians. We don't want to come under the tribal leaders and do the things they say we have to do. My people are very kind. And in spite of everything, they are hardworking and very warm and friendly. Marco was one of the leaders of this refugee village in the Andes Mountains and was among those who stood up to the tribal leaders because what they were being told to do was wrong, like stealing, doing land raids, drunkenness, chewing of cocoa leaves, and abandoning Christianity to take part in rituals linked to spiritism. We try to tell them what they are doing is not acting in a right fashion, but they don't listen to us when we tell them what they are doing was wrong. As a result of their stand, Marco says they were threatened by the village leaders who have ties to the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, also known as FARC. We have also been threatened by death, psychological threats, they say they would take away our medical aid. There would be no schools for our children. And they would cut off electricity and water. The opposition against the followers of Christ intensified after an avalanche caused by the eruption of a volcano forced all the people in their village and area to flee. Government aid was given to the tribal leaders who refused to help the Christians, forcing them to leave in 2007. As a result, around 50 families traveled over 100 kilometers and set up a temporary village on a farmer's land, living in little huts with dirt floors. It's been a struggle to survive. When we came here, the people in the area didn't know us. Everything is based on reputation. Our people had to do something we never would have thought we have to do, and that was going to the marketplace and beg for money to support our families. Slowly, we got the trust of the farmers in the region, and one by one, they started to hire people from our tribe. Now, our people have work. Around three dozen Christian families from other villages in the region also moved to the makeshift village after being expelled from their communities. Some of them had been badly beaten up, including on their legs, before being chased out. The anger towards the Christians even led to this church being destroyed, which was secretly videoed. You can see men on the roof dismantling the building. But it was the torture of the believers that was so hateful. What triggered it was when the wives were submitting to their husbands and not the tribal leaders about worshipping the Lord freely and following their husbands' advice. So the tribe descended on them and put the husbands in jail for 72 hours and put them in stocks and those torture machines that rip their limbs and also gave them 20 lashes, some more, some less. After that, we were forced to leave. Lenore told us about how one young girl had begged the tribal leaders to beat her instead of her father, fearing he would be killed. They granted her request, whipping her from the waist down. The pressure was increasing more and more, and the tribal leaders started to come down on us because of our belief in God, that he is bigger, and the gods that the tribes have believed in. So we were fasting and praying about this. Finally, they destroyed everything and kicked us out. Lenore's husband, Wilson, was a leader in the church. What he taught his fellow Christians was not appreciated by the tribal leaders. I had worked in the church as a deacon for three years, and I preached to the people, witchcraft is not good. I told them we needed to leave all that and follow the things of God. In April of 2013, Wilson was just heading out to Cali to sell raspberries in the city with a dozen of his fellow co-workers when they were stopped by members of the local tribal police. That was around 7 o'clock in the evening. 
They said we were going against their practices because, as Christians, we weren't participating in their witchcraft. Wilson and the others that included women were taken to a secluded area for eight hours while the tribal police decided what to do with these Christians, who they consider lawbreakers. At 3 a.m. they moved us to a different location and they took us to a small room about a meter wide and a meter long. They told us our sentence was for three days. We had to remain in that small room. There were 13 of us. We just prayed and asked God to help us get through that sentence. We didn't have a bathroom or anything, so we had to do our needs right there. They said they were going to give us food. They only gave us bread on the first day and sugar water. We had to endure hunger and cold for three days. Then they tortured the men by putting them in stocks, something like this. Two boards that have holes in them, and they put your feet into them around your ankles. The wood is about 30 centimeters long. And then they put the wood really tight around my legs. And then they hang you upside down for 15 minutes. After that, my legs got numb and I couldn't walk. I fell to the floor. They put me in a chair and whipped me 15 times. They also whipped my friends. I prayed that the Lord would help me get through the whipping. Wilson says the Lord answered his prayer. After the whipping, they said to me, this is your fault because you have been terrible. I told them I didn't do anything wrong. The only thing I didn't do was the witchcraft, and I told others not to participate in that. I prayed the Lord would help me endure. I didn't feel anything. The Lord made it so I didn't feel the pain while they were whipping me. The other brothers and sisters prayed the same thing, and the Lord gave us all the strength. Some of them fainted. Wilson and the others were finally released, but didn't receive medical attention. When they did get back to the village, Lenore washed their wounds. When the tribal leaders realized Wilson and his family would not participate in the rituals, dances, and customs, even after the beatings, they forced them out of the village. They would have to leave behind their home and crops. With no way to support his family, Wilson came to the refugee village to join other displaced Christians. While they were forced into poverty, at least they were safe. The persecution would have stopped for Wilson and Lenore, and they could have lived peacefully in their community. All they had to do was renounce Christ. We do not want to return to the darkness of our ancestors. We want to continue to follow the real God, the big God. Maria and her husband Jorge had also been experiencing trouble and problems for years in their village because of their Christian faith. But things intensified after they joined a Christian organization so they could get practical help for their family and other believers. Tribal leaders were excluding Christians in the distribution of such things as food. They also began gatherings in their home for prayer and worship. In April of 2013, Maria was home alone with her two-year-old child when things turned violent. A mob formed and about half the people were seeking the truth, and the other half were upset and mad at us. It was like an evil spirit came over the ones who were mad, and they overwhelmed everyone else and came in and destroyed our house. They took the building materials and all our possessions and left us with absolutely nothing. Maria says as difficult as it was to lose all earthly belongings, it could have been much worse for her and her child. Fortunately, they escaped the attack unharmed. I thank God that I'm still alive and I have good health, but we went through times of feeling very alone because people who we thought were our friends and even some who we thought were fellow Christians turned on us at the end. Jorge was away at the time of the destruction of his home. The mob were especially angry with him because of his involvement in the Christian group and leadership in the house church. They threatened to torture me and put me in prison for 40 years for being a Christian and being part of this Christian organization. 
Jorge felt he had no choice but to take his wife and children away from everything they knew for the safety of the Christian refugee village and live under a tarp. It's hard because I'm a father and a husband. It's hard to leave all of our crops and home and everything we love and owned behind. In spite of all they've been through, Maria and Jorge say their faith in Jesus Christ is strong. We are grateful to the Lord. We are going to continue the spiritual battle until we win. We are reaching souls for the Lord. I never felt abandoned by the Lord. The Bible says He is with us everywhere we go, and He is always encouraging us. Jorge and Maria, Lenore and Wilson, and the other Christians in their community recently relocated to a permanent location, and one that they can call home just 24 kilometers from where many of them have lived since 2007. Thanks to help from the Voice of the Martyrs Finland and believers around the world, the land was purchased and the construction of a new community is underway. These followers of Christ are very thankful. We are very aware that Christians around the world want to help us and get land, but we also recognize Christians around the world who need our prayers. So we come together and pray for other Christians who also have needs. The fact that we have been aided and helped in these difficult times has given us more of a motivation to also pray for other people who might be going through similar things or worse things than what we are experiencing. I'm so thankful for the help that comes from other Christians in other countries. It gives us strength to keep on going. Thank you so much, and I ask you to pray for us. An American missionary by the name of David Peters and his co-workers brought the gospel to the Nazo tribe in south-central Colombia in the early 1930s. Peters and his team translated the Bible into the local language, and as a result, many families came to Christ. Other missionaries also played an important role in the development of evangelical Christianity in this part of Colombia over the past eight decades. According to the Voice of the Martyrs partner, Russell Stendel of Colombia Pari Cristo, there are more than 400,000 indigenous believers in four states in southern Colombia among the three and a half million indigenous people. Many of them are living under intense persecution. The American-born Stendel, who has been in Colombia for decades, is amazed by the faith and devotion of these believers who he became aware of just three years ago. We, you know, we've become more and more aware of them, and they're one of the largest tribes in Colombia. And it's been one of the most intense persecution situations, but this is probably where the gospel is growing the fastest in Colombia right now, is among the Nasa Indians. And uh, these are people that are, are normally very prosperous people. The only reason that they're living in poverty in refugee camps is because uh, they've been hit so hard and uh, everything has been taken from them. But if we help them get back on their feet, uh, they'll hit the ground running. Colombia Petit Cristo has several dozen Christian radio stations all over the country broadcasting the gospel into some of the most dangerous places on earth. This new village for these indigenous Christians will not only have their own church building, but also their own radio station like this one to proclaim the one true God, even to those who violently oppose the gospel. The Lord has given us ways of helping these people to where we're perceived as part of the answer. And many times even the non-Christian Indians thank us uh, for helping them to have a tribal radio station that of course is run by the Christians. A team of four ladies and a teenage girl from the Vancouver area traveled to southern Columbia to encourage their sisters in Christ who have suffered so much for the sake of the gospel by spending time with them and giving them new ideas for crocheting and knitting so they can generate income for themselves. 34 ladies traveled by bus every day for five consecutive days to this secure location. For them to know that there was a group of Christian women who, who, who are willing, who were willing and are willing to come down to encourage them, to, to show them the love of Christ and to, to say we're with you because they've been through so much, they've been persecuted, they've been for their faith. No one has done this for us before. 
This will be very effective. It gives us new ideas that we can do. But we are most happy just to have someone to come and show us they care and bring these materials. We have gotten wary as we have gone day by day. But as we look back and see what the Lord has done, yes, we have gotten stronger and have been strengthened. Strengthened to continue to live for Christ and advance His kingdom in Colombia.